Hey guys, this is Rick Hogg with Warhog Tactical and I want to tell you why I'm running Aimpoint products. So to set a little bit of history, I've been using Aimpoint for the majority of my time within Special Operations. So it started with their 500 series and really where I saw Aimpoint's true worth for me was when the T1 came out and we started running that on our carbines. I'd put that, that site through all kinds of smash and falling out of helicopters and numerous different combat deployments. And here's the thing, I'm gonna make a bold statement. I bet my life on their products. I did then and I do today. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview on some of their products. So for me, when looking at uh, the special operations side, really my introduction to the aim point was with the T1. So I just had one T1, never broke it, never worried about losing zero. This thing was bomb proof. Nice thing with the T1 has this large knob on the side for a quick, easy rotation when you're looking at your dot brightness. The other thing, it does have IR settings on there. And the way the aim point has done it is where it has the four screws down at the bottom here, it allows you to have different mounting options if you were looking at aftermarket mounts on that one. So this here's the T1. And like I said, this thing was absolutely bomb proof. So from there, aim point went and picked up the T2. So when you kind of look at the T2, I think from this side, you kind of get a better idea. We've got some little bit of ruggedization going on uh, and close the cap up on top. But again, looking at the ergonomics of it, we still have our rotatory knob on the side. And again, just have a different mounting options. This one here being just a reptilian mount on that one there. So again, just gives you some versatility with that. Um, looking at kind of their latest red dot sight, and that would be the duty RDS. So when you're looking at the duty RDS, just a couple of things you can notice. So on those other ones, they didn't have any type of caps or protection. They did send just kind of rubber caps on there, but they really weren't that functional out in the field. So what Aimpoint has done is they've had these caps on here and I'll kind of show you them in a second, but we've got a solid black one on the front, but we have a clear one on the back and I'll tell you why they've done that. When you look here off to the side, what you can see is we still have our adjustment points. However, they're kind of recessed back in there. And again, you can see from on the top view, we've got that recessed there. And then what Aimpoint has done is on their controls, now they're on the side. So if you look to the other side, don't be confused by that big round space thinking that's your controls for the brightness of your dot. That's just where your battery compartment's going into. So what they have done, and I'll just give you kind of a quick demo. If I were to, in a law enforcement type situation, I had my dot on, I had my rifle in my patrol car and I were to grab it, in an emergency type situation, let's say I forgot to flip the caps or whatever, I can still mount the rifle. And again, just having that occluded red sight, I still see the dot and I would still be able to engage my target. I've done some tests on it and it works just fine. But the nice thing is I can just hit those covers. And to me, I like to have my covers going down. That was just out of my way. So I don't have anything obscuring the top and just gives me some better vision there. So that would be Aimpoint's latest duty RDS. And again, that's their battery compartment versus the actual control knobs. Um, one, point, one thing to point out is when you look at, even with their positioning of their brightness buttons, it's very easy. Hey, if I'm here and need to make a quick adjustment, I can come back and either go higher or lower depending on whatever setting if I did have to make that adjustment. So again, Aimpoint's duty RDS. Aimpoint also has 3x magnifier which basically sets right on the picatinny and gives you a 3x capability the nice thing with it is hey if i don't need that magnification i can just throw the magnifier to the side it's out of my way so i'm just getting kind of that 1x or just clear see through that through that red dot sight and then if need be i can just clip it back over and that gives me my three power so again, just adds to that if you needed some magnification or better identify something, the magnifier gives you that option. So I'm gonna talk about the Aimpoint Pro real quick. So on the Aimpoint Pro, you can kind of see this uh, control knob over here controls my brightness. You can hear the clicks in there. And again, 
they've set their caps up in the same way with the Duty RDS so that now if I were to mount it, I do have that ability to go ahead and look through because I do have that clear mount on the back. I do have my protective caps for my adjustment knobs on there. And the nice thing with um, the Patrol Rifle Optic is it already has the mount on there. And all I have to do is basically just twist the knob and it's automatically gonna tighten up for me. So again, just aim point on the, uh, on the Pro, just a good setup if you're looking for a different option when it comes to red dot sights on your rifle. So let's talk about the aim point acro. So most people know the acro for pretty much running on a handgun platform. But here's the beauty when it comes to aim point is the versatility that they put across their products. So again, they're basically built bomb proof. These things are rugged, good clean glass. And now I've got versatility because nobody else in the market has a Picatinny rail. So how is it I've got the flexibility to run an aim point acro either on a pistol or on a carbine? It's because what you don't see here at the bottom is the Picatinny. Again, running just another reptilian mount on there so I can take my acro off of my pistol if I wanted to, put it on this mount here, and now I've got a carbine type option. So what you see on the carbine is the Acro P1. So you can see kind of on um, that side, that's pretty much your battery compartment. Seen again, the same concept with the recessed adjustments. And then the difference on the P1, is you can see, here's my larger buttons to increase or decrease my dot brightness. So again, super versatile when it comes to what I can do with my Aimpoint Acro series. And then let's talk about the P2. So you can see, here's the versatility right there. Pick a tinny mount, pistol, carbine, I have whatever options. And again, I have my recessed adjustments, both on top and the bottom for my windage and elevation. What you can see is I have my battery compartment here, but now my buttons are still there. So again, when you're looking at aim point and especially when it comes to a being able to adjust the brightness of that dot on the fly the nice thing is hey you can see that when my hands are here they're still in that position that I can easily adjust that brightness of that dot so again aim point acro versatility picatinny enclosed red dot sight that's the key thing when we're looking at this pistol I'm not worried about water, dirt, mud, anything getting on that emitter, blocking it out. Trust me, I've been in the rain plenty with this thing, and I'm not ever worried about drawing that pistol out of the holster, bringing it up and going, as I present out, is the dot there or not? Nope, because it's there every single time. So again, make sure when you're looking at a red dot option for whether it's your pistol, your carbine, or one that's versatile to go between both, you definitely look at aim point. Their stuff's reliable, their stuff's rugged, good quality glass, and again, to make a bold statement, I would bet my life on aim point products.